Coach Husky took over the NIU basketball program last episode, and his first season was not great, as they went a whopping 5-23 and in year one. To fix that, Coach Husky brought in three-star shooting guard Josiah Hobbs and coveted four-star point guard Xavier Zuzak. With a lineup consisting of four true freshmen starting for the Huskies, will they be able to compete for the MAC championship this season? Let's find out in this episode. Our first game of season two was at home against Cal Poly, and right away, they would score from downtown against us. Our first bucket would come from true freshman J.C. Nguyen, but it would then take us almost two minutes to get our next basket of the night. Cal Poly seemed to be finding every single hole in our defense so far to start this game, and we needed to find a way to get back into this game, or we could go down big early on. The Mustangs would come right back down the court and hit a three of their own, but we would eventually manage to get it down to only a two-point game on second chance points here on the fast break. That didn't change the fact, though, that our defense was still playing horribly so far. One of our bigger name recruits and Josiah Hobbs would come down and make it a one-point game with this shot, and J.C. Nguyen would follow that up by giving us our first lead of the night. The crowd at the convo was loud as things were looking promising for the Huskies now tonight, but that would quickly change as the Mustangs would steal all momentum right before the end of the first half. Their offense would come out on fire shooting the ball to start the second half, and our defense just couldn't seem to slow them down at all so far. What was once a one-point lead was now an 11-point deficit that the Huskies were facing, and as the three ball kept falling for the Mustangs in the second half tonight, their lead kept increasing over the Huskies here in DeKill. With less than 30 seconds to go, we would manage to get it back down to a single-digit deficit, but even with another three-pointer that would bring it down to a four-point game, it was too late as we'd lose this one 62-58. to The season was not off to the start that we wanted, as we would drop to 0-3 to start the year, but we'd pick up our first win against UW-Milwaukee. Just like last season, that would be the only game we would win all month. With this being our last non-conference game, we needed to win as I didn't want to go into conference play with only one win again. The Huskies started this game out very sloppy, and from the looks of it, most people thought it was going to be another blowout here at the Convo Center. But we we started to turn things around halfway through the first half and kept up with the Mountaineers. And with just under five and a half minutes to go, we would finally take the lead back from them. The offense was starting to heat up tonight and kept extending our lead. I don't know where this Husky team has been all season long so far, as we were headed into halftime with an almost double digit lead. This team has been known, however, to blow second half leads and lose games because of it, but our offense didn't seem to be losing any momentum at all so far in the second half, and our defense had been doing a great job as well of holding the Mountaineers to minimal points. I'm just hoping that this is the team that can show up in conference play this season, as we would be a threat in the MAC conference if we can keep playing this well. We were starting conference play in season number two, and surprisingly, we weren't the worst team in our conference headed into it. We definitely wanted to keep it that way too, as we were taking on the Toledo Rockets here in DeKalb. Toledo definitely got off to a much quicker start to this game than we did, but we would manage to close that gap with just under seven minutes to go in the first, and would take the lead back over Toledo with some fancy behind the back passing from freshman Xavier Zuzak. With some more great ball movement this half, we started to see our lead over the Rockets grow, but had to make sure we kept knocking down shots as they were closing that lead before halftime. Toledo would manage to get to the free throw line here right before the end of the first half, but would only go one for two at the charity stripe, so we would head into the locker room with a 32 to 27 lead over them. The Rockets would come out of the locker room and strike first in the second half, but the Huskies still seemed to be maintaining the momentum we had from the first, as Xavier Zuzak would hit this baseline jumper for the Huskies to extend their lead to double digits. It took nearly five minutes for us, but finally the shot from beyond the arc started heating up for the Huskies, as it was helping NIU keep their distance from Toledo so far. The Rockets were not quite ready to give up on this game yet though, as they would get to the free throw line and cut the lead down to 9. The Huskies were getting sloppy and turning the ball over late in the game, and it was allowing Toledo to get closer to completing a comeback, as this game would end up coming down to free throws for us, and Xavier Zuzak would hit both of them at the line, as the true freshman would help lead his team to a conference victory. We would manage to win two more games after that this month, and were 1-1 away from improving upon last year's final record. This game would be a tough one for the Huskies as they were taking on a very strong team in Ohio and they were showing us early on in this game why they were one of the best teams in the MAC. A win here tonight on the road would be huge for this Huskies team this season as it would officially mark improvement from last year's team which did not play very well at all. And if they got the win tonight, this team still has a month and a half to add even more wins to their record. I definitely think the future is starting to look brighter for Coach Husky and his young team he's building here as this young squad was showing what type of fight they had in them tonight against this tough Bobcats team as they would head into the second half leading by eight over them. A big difference I see in this team that is different from last year's team is their ability to play a complete game. How many times last year did this team head into half with a lead and take their foot off the gas and blow it in the second half compared to this year's team who was only increasing their lead over Ohio as the second half went on? With that being said, this is still a young team who has to develop more on the defensive side of things as we were slowly letting the Bobcats creep back into this game basket by basket. This three 
quarter would get it down to a two-point game for the Bobcats with under a minute to go, and we almost let Ohio take this game to overtime with poor defense around the basket on this play. But we would make up for that with an offensive rebound on this free throw to help seal the game for us tonight and officially make it six wins on the season with a 61-57 victory. This turned out to be the month our team started putting multiple wins together in a row and also signed our first recruit in three-star Josiah Sherrod with three stars T.R. Radlovic, Skip Hardaway, and Demon Eden being close to signing with us as well. And man, I really hope we get this dude solely because of his name. The Huskies had two games left this season and would drop the first one to Central Michigan and headed into the final game of year two against Akron, the Huskies had a chance to reach double digit wins with a victory here tonight. There was some bad news, however, for the Huskies headed into their final game as Xavier Zuzak would be out for over a month with an injury. This team already found themselves down early on to the Zips, so they would have to figure out a way to win this game without their star freshman on the court. We would finally take our first lead of the night over Akron with under five minutes to go in the first half, and this was already proving to be a closely contested back and forth game between these two teams so far tonight. The Zips would find a wide open three and would knock it down to go up by four over us, but we were determined not to go into the locker room at halftime losing to the Zips tonight, as true freshman JC Nguyen would come up clutch for us off the inbounds pass and would knock down this shot at the buzzer to tie it up headed into halftime. We would waste no time in the second half taking the lead over Akron on this fast break, and what we didn't do a lot in the first half that I was hoping we could improve on was the three-point shot. That wouldn't mean anything though if we weren't able to slow down the Zips from behind the line. Much like the first half, this was still a neck-to-neck -neck game between these two teams, as once again we would leave Akron a wide open three and they would take the lead because of it. Freshman Josiah Hobbs, who was filling in for the injured Zuzak, would hit a three right back for us though, but we just couldn't seem to do anything to help us pull away from Akron this half. Finally, we would get another open look at three and the senior Gadsden would extend our lead to five with it, as now Akron would have to send us to the free throw line, where our young team would step up under pressure and knock down all their free throws late this game, which would lead us to a nine point victory to close out the regular season, giving us 10 wins on the year and the fourth seed in the MAC conference tournament. It would be great if we could win this game tonight, but even if we don't, we know we've still made a huge improvement over last season. And this young team is only going to continue to develop and get better for the next few years, as a first round win in the MAC tournament this season would be a great way to continue that development for them. This had been a close back and forth game so far for us in the first half, as at one point we would go up by six over the Eagles here in the first, but they would knock down this dagger right before halftime to tie it up at 37 apiece. It looked like this game would come down to the wire if it kept going the way it was so far in the second half, as Eastern Michigan would eventually get their lead up to four points over us, but freshman JC Nguyen would tie it back up for us with the shot. With just under a minute to go, we would leave Eastern Michigan wide open for a three to take the lead, and after we managed to tie the game back up, would make the same exact mistake again, but freshman Josiah Hobbs would come up clutch for us and would send this game to overtime. We would manage to get the first bucket in overtime tonight, but we were still making the mistake of leaving Eastern Michigan wide open looks at threes. That would end up costing us as we were still down by one after this shot with under a minute to go, so we had to hope that the Eagles would miss their free throws now, as they would knock down the first one and go up by four points, and then would miss the second one as we would pull down the rebound and push it up the court to Josiah Hobbs, who would step back and knock down another clutch three-pointer for us, but there wouldn't be enough time left on the clock for us to complete the comeback. Senior Gerald Calvert would end the season as our leading scorer, but we would be losing him this offseason, as Xavier Zuzak was our highest scoring freshman this year. Our nod to high was the returning leader in rebounds this season, and Zuzek also led the team in passing this year as well. Kent State would return to the championship this season to take on Bowling Green, but the Falcons would end up winning the MAC in season number two. The championship was set between three-seed UConn and eight-seed Villanova, as the Huskies would take home the title in year number two. To kick off the offseason, Xavier Zuzak was named to the all-MAC freshman team, and we'd be losing both D'Angelo Gadsden and our leading scorer, Gerald Kelvert, to graduation. As even with the turnaround this season, Coach Husky was on super thin ice headed into year three. He would end up bringing in three-star Tier Radlovic, Josiah Sherrod, Gerard Keita, and Garrison McNamara, who would combine to give us the 36th ranked class in the country this year, as hopefully they can help propel us to an even better season three.